Hey guys, it's Linda and Lisa. And we are here to give you the getting started for the grab and go grommet bag. Now this is a bag designed by Heather and Laura and they're in South Florida, so they're not here to do this. So Lisa and I are gonna step in. We wanna go through what comes in the kit and then some things you need to do to get started with the prep. So they're gonna get directions. Mm -hmm. Your directions are gonna give you the time of the class. So if you've ordered this already, this is going to be in the kit. You've got a nice little bag and it gives you the time of the class. It's on a Facebook page, The Creating with Martelli. It's a free class. If you bought the kit, then you've got some of the materials, not everything. So we'll talk about those. So you're getting directions. There is an additional page that was not included, but I'm gonna ask Jessica to put it on our website. It gives you all the pieces that you need to have in the measurements. So we're gonna add that in here it won't be in your package that was mailed to you so make sure you go to the website and look for the last page all right so they're going to get fabric how much fabric do they have they're going to get a yard and a half of two different fabrics so we've got them right here so you're going to get a total of three yards of the fabric so one is going to be for the body the main body and then the other fabric is going to be for your lining and possibly your pockets and however else you want to use it you could use your body for that your strap or you could use the the lining for your strap so it's going to be up to you how you want to use it but you do have a yard and a half and it is non-directional so you're not going to have to worry about having extra fabric if you're doing uh, pieces that were more directional so a yard and a half of each one so a total of three yards of fabrics and they may get this fabric but they may get yep, a different they may fabric. get a different fabric i think we've got a total of three different fabrics that we're working with so all right so then we've go. got some sf 101 yep. or the shirt both will shirt fuse. Now that is going to be used for your pockets. So in doing this little prep video, you're not really going to need that unless you want to go ahead and cut your pieces for whatever pocket that you're going to do and then fuse that on. But that's going to be part of the class. The next thing is going to be, we've got your batting here. And we have enough batting in here for you to be able to do your lining. So whichever fabric that you choose to do your lining, you're going to need to go ahead and cut out your fabric for your lining, and then your pieces for your batting. And we'll go further into that in just a minute. The next piece that you're going to be getting is going to be the fusible fleece. And we are using the heavyweight fusible fleece. It's got the glue on the one side, so you're going to have about a yard of it by width of fabric. And I want to say it's a yard by 44 or 45 inches or something like that. You're going to have plenty. Now this is going to be used for the outer lining of your bag. And we'll go into that a little bit further. And we're choosing to use the fleece because some of your machines may not be able to handle foam. If you've got mm -hmm. a high-end machine that can go through, power through, then the second bag, the third bag, the fourth bag, then you can try that foam. The Bozal foam. foam is the wonderful. Foam. You can try batting. Batting really doesn't have enough stability to give it shape. Mm -hmm. We really like the fleece, so that's why and we're this including one's done it with in there fleece. for you. And look how nice it's standing. Yeah. It has great body to it. And I believe this one is done with the fleece also. Then you guys are going to get the grommets. It's the eight grommet bag. So grab and go grommet bag. There's eight grommets. So you're going to get basically the male and the female grommets. There are lots of other grommets out there on the market. You can get the metallic ones, all kinds of things, but this is a good starter set to get you. Yeah. Then you're going to get a three inch square template and then you're going to get a circle template. Do not do anything with these. Now, if you want to mark them, you can. Yeah. You, know, you can yeah. mark three and this is a two, but they're not used for, um, but they have, they have to get a grip on there, but there's, a per there's an actual purpose for them that's going to be further into the class. They're not going to need them right off the bat for your prep work, but just do go ahead and keep these because you will be using them for the class. Yeah, just put them aside. Now, you guys that have been crafting for a long time, you may have that plastic canvas or you may have done cardboard or whatever for the bottom of your bags. We're including this. This is part of our Tasket Basket option. The small Tasket Basket, you can buy this to mm -hmm. put in the bottom. You can leave it as is or you can cover it with fabric as Lisa's done yeah, here. here. So this is included with your package as well. Then we have a couple other options. So we've got for your strap. I'm going to pull this over here and let you talk about yeah. this. So this is what we chose to make the strap with. So this is the fusible foam. So it's got the fusible on one side. It is the foam. So this is part of the prep work that you will be doing is I will be having you at least get most of your strap completed because you can't totally finish the strap until it's been woven through your bag. So we're going to go ahead and get at least that part of the strap done. So what I'm trying to do is trying to get these little things that's just a lot of time 
to do so that we can get more of this prep work done for the class so that we can get through the class so you can have the extra classes at the end. So And we'll this talk is, uh, more. You're going to need this. And it's yeah. longer than what you need. Yeah. This is actually about 65 inches, and I think you only need 62. 62. 57 mm -hmm. to 62. So you've got a little bit extra length here. So and we'll talk more about this and what you're doing with this and what yep. you're doing with this yep. before the class gets started. Yes. Then we've given you some locking tweezers. These guys here, they're also called bodkins. If you all have bodkins, that's what this is. Martelli sells a locking tweezer. So you're able to use this for a number of projects. And we'll turn it this way. You can see this allows you to slide and grab. If you're mm -hmm. still making face masks, boy, this comes in really handy with that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, then well, so we have that's everything that we just talked about that's actually in this uh, grab and go kit. So you've got this stuff that's coming with the kit, but then we have lots of recommendations yes. for you. Some of the things that I recommend, and it's in here, is if you have some fray check. Um, because if you ha might have do difficulty doing the zigzag stitch that goes around your grommets, then you might want to use some of the fray check. I did use fray check, but I also did zigzag. So you could do either one. Heather and Lori recommend that you do the zigzag because it kind of smashes it, uh, compacts the, the, the batting, the, the fleece, and the fabrics into a very thinner, air, thinner space so that you can fit those grommets in a little bit better. But I was able to also do these with the fray check. Now, um, another thing that I'm going to recommend is, you know, the, the tweezers. You are going to might need some tweezers to hold everything in place, particularly when you're doing that zigzag going around. I recommend when you are doing this thicker work, not just so much when you're doing your quilting or when you're doing your piecing, but when you're working with the thicker pieces, putting it all together, I recommend you have some heavyweight needles, like either a denim or the leather needle. And these are the ones that Janome has. So a heavy, higher density needle. You're going to need these. Um, she recommend using um, double-sided tape. I didn't have any double-sided tape. Get some double-sided tape if you want to work with it. But I did have lots of glue sticks. So I used the glue stick to uh, hold things in place for for things that I was working on. And I'm actually going to show you how I'm going to use this at when we're doing the prep work for the strap. Basting spray. Since my batting is not fusible, I am using <laughs> the, the Taylor basting spray to uh, fuse or baste my fabric to my batting before I quilt it. And I found it was very useful to, to use this. The clips, you're going to find yourself using clips. So if you don't have any of the Martelli clips, be sure to grab some of the Martelli clips. They'll be very useful in holding everything in place for you while you're doing while you're doing your project. You might find a seam press might be useful, particularly when you're making everything nice and flat, like when you're working on the pockets or different things that you're working on, make everything hold its shape nice and well. A wool mat. Talk about why the wool mat is so amazing, Linda. So when we're talking about pressing, the wool mat is such a perfect surface for this. It's dense. This is thick and dense. And when you go to press, not on your cutting mat, but on a flat surface, this is going to reflect that heat up, push that heat up. So yeah, when you're really pressing good. something, you're going to get exactly what it is you want. And things don't slide on here. They grab. If you think about a normal pressing surface, your fabric kind of slides. But this wool mat is going to grab it. The, you guys know how great these are. So yeah. if you don't have one already, then pick one up. And we've got a lot of different options size-wise for you. Oh, my goodness. Now this right here is the, the Martelli Fat Quarter Roller, it's 18 by 22. And I think most of the things you're cutting is 18 by 22. Your panels, front and back, the outside, the inside panels for your lining are 18 by 22. You're cutting your batting 18 by 22, your fleece. So if you don't have this, get this. It's going to make things go yeah. through, go by so much quicker because you start off at the 18 by 22 or 18 by 24. You start off with this measurement and then you're going to trim it down anyway once you get all your quilting done to the size that you're going to be working with. And the 22 is for 44 inch fabric. If your mm -hmm. fabric is 42 inches, no big deal. It's going to be 18 by 21. You can still use this yeah, template. Absolutely. So don't worry about that. I had somebody say, well, it doesn't fit. My fabric's 42 inches. You're still going to use this. That yeah. selvage can be a part of your fat quarter when you're cutting. And it can be a part of this if you're using it because you're going to be trimming it up all the way around. If I'm not mistaken, 
I'm going to flip through here real quick. I'm going to tell you what size you're, when you get it all quilted and you're getting ready to put your grommets on, you're going to trim it down the sides. You're trimming it to 20 by 20 by 15 and a half. So if you're doing that, if, if you find you might need to use a little bit of the salvage, just go ahead and keep it on there because you're going to trim it down anyway. So yeah. you're going to trim it down. And if you don't have the fat quarter template and you don't want to spend the time getting that ordered and getting it in, then any of the Martelli rulers that have the no slip material on the back would work. Just make sure that they're long enough to be able to cut the length. I love our four by 16 ruler, the two by 12 rulers, but they're not really long enough for a practical use for a project like this. So this is the no slip strip ruler, our multi-use tool. We've got the half inch, the jelly roll ruler. Yeah, my There's so many other rulers <laughs> out there that you can use for straight edge cutting. Yep, absolutely. All right, what do they need to do before the class gets started? Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna go ahead and cut your fabrics for your panels and your straps. So I would recommend the first thing you do is decide which fabric you're going to use for your lining, which I'm assuming most of you are going to be using the main one for, for I mean, for the main body. And then the, the solid will probably be your lining. So the next question would be, which one do I want to use for my strap? Because you need to go ahead and cut off your four inches with the fabric. You need to cut two, four inches with the fabric. So either cut it from your lining or cut it from your, um, excuse me, your, your lining or your outside fabric. Just go ahead and get those two strips cut with the fabric four inches. Then you're going to take those two pieces, make sure they're nice iron flat and everything good to go. Then you're going to sew those two pieces together end to end. So you're going to have one long strip. Go ahead and press it, press that seam open because the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and get your strap on here. So this is where I go ahead and I use my glue, st glue oh, stick or whatever I do with my glue <laughs> stick. So when I have my fabric cut and I have my fabric laid open, you're going to follow the instructions and I want you to be sure to do this, is I have my glue up, I have my fabric down, face down, so I've got my the wrong side up. and. She talks, she walks you through the process of what she does. I go ahead and take that strip on one side. I go ahead and sew, uh, I, oh, I went ahead on one edge, I went ahead and pressed a quarter inch all the way down the entire length of that strip. I just went ahead and just did that. And then I laid this on my fabric. So imagine this is my four inches piece right here. So here's my four inch piece and I've got this side already folded up with my quarter inch and I've got this piece laying here and what you're going to do is you're going to fold this one over and then fold that piece that's got that you've already pressed down like this but what I want you to do is you could basically you're going to center this onto that four inch strip but I found that when I take my glue stick and I just put a bunch of glue on the wrong side, on the soft side, the side without the glue, the side that's going to be pressed onto your four inch strip. I just put a big, you know, I just ran the glue stick on this and then I pressed it on. So it stayed in place because then when you go folding that fabric and then folding it over again, then you're going to be using your clips to hold it in place and then you're going to use your iron to press it down. So it seals it because of the glue that's in the foam. And then you're just going to do your simple sewing. So if you can look closely right here, I'm going to try to get this to where the camera is looking at it here. So here, there's where that little seam is right there where I had so why I had folded it over a quarter of an inch and then folded it over. So this piece right here is folded over onto the glue and this is a piece that folds over and then you're going to stitch right there along that edge and I stitched here and I stitched here. So that's how I did the strap. I did everything to finish the strap up except the very ends. And if you follow instructions, she has you not doing about three inches on each end because you can't finish the strap until the bag is done and the grommets are on and then you're weaving it through. So I want you to go ahead and get as much done on the strap that you're going to get done. Now, I'm the cheater, so some <laughs> of you might be like me where you just don't have enough time. 
or you say, hey, this is my first bag I'm practicing. You may already own some of this stuff. Yes. These are your straps that you can purchase in different widths as well. Mm -hmm. So that cactus bag that you have that you made, I thought would look so good oh, yeah. with this. But mm -hmm. you can see there are a variety of colors here. So you can see this here. This even has a little bit of white kind of stitching. So your traditional black, white, those kinds of things. But again, these come in different colors, different widths. So if you wanted to do this, you could. So yeah, you don't Yeah, if you don't always... want to do this at all, just forget everything I just said and go get the webbing. <laughs> and that way you can just cut it to size and then you'll just sew it in there at the very end. So yeah. that's if you don't, if you already have webbing. If you've or got you it wanna, in stock. you don't want to you know. mess with it, then just go ahead, just do that. Don't worry about this. We'll just, uh, we're not going to mess with that and we're going to go with the webbing. So, all right. So then you don't even have to cut your four inches or your eight inches with the fabric. You can just save it for something else. But it is a good <laughs> process to learn. If you haven't done straps before and you're feeling stressed about the class, if you're a newbie to purses, you know, then that's one of those ways that you kind of get through the class. And then when you have time, go back and watch the replay and do the straps because look how nice these look. I mean, they're gorgeous straps. They're cute. But they well, match. I would have had that so. webbing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would have saved some time. <laughs> yeah, again, you've got to kind of prioritize your time. We know a lot of you yep. are back to work or you've got family, you've got things on your plate. It's just not possible. And you're looking for shortcuts. And there are lots of cute bags out there that use that strapping. When I went through some of my stuff, I found a ton of bags that I purchased that had that already done. Mm -hmm. And I never looked at it as a, it doesn't look good. It was like, well, it matches. It looks good. Yeah. And they're practical too. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to show you I'm doing your outside lining, your outside fabric, the main body of the outside fabric. So that's going to be used with your fleece. So what I want you to do is before you even cut your fabric, I want you to take it to the iron and I want you to iron it nice and flat, get all the creases out of it, even put some, you know, I'm a big believer in putting some spray starch on there or, you know, use some flatter. Just get it nice and crisp and ready to go because then you're going to go ahead and cut out your pieces and you're going to need two of the exact same thing. I believe they're, oh my goodness. Um, you keep talking on the next She's going to get the exact size. The, the size. I want to believe they're 18 by, I think they're 18 by 22, the fat quarter size. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, she has an 18, yeah, 18 by 22, and I want to, I'm looking again. 18 you're cutting, by 22. 18 by 22. So it's like that fat quarter template, if you get that fat quarter. So you're going to cut two mm -hmm. 18 by 22 pieces, okay? Then you're going to cut 18 by 22 of your fusible fleece. That's why I want you to go ahead and get your fabric ironed first, because if sometimes when you iron things and if you hit it with some spray starch, it's going to shrink up on you, and if you've already cut it, then it's going to be smaller than your fleece mm -hmm. that you're going to cut because your, your fleece doesn't shrink up on you like if you, when you're ironing it. But your fabric can, if you're particular, if you're using some steam or if you're using some of that vest press or whatever on it to you know get it all the wrinkles out. So iron it first, get it the way you want it, then cut your 18 by 22 inch pieces. You're going to need two, and then with your fusible fleece, you're going to need two. 18 by 22 pieces. Then you're going to take them to your iron and following it, you're just going to, what I do is I lay my fleece down first with the glue side up and then I'm laying my fabric down wrong side on top of it. So I'm looking at the pretty side of it. And I like to start from the middle after I get it all laid out nice and pretty where it's all even. I start in the middle and I work myself out and I'm not pressing or pushing. I'm pressing, pressing, pressing and moving my iron and pressing, pressing, pressing to get that glue to uh, adhere to my fabric. So once you get that done, so you're going to get this. Here's my glue. It's kind of scratchy mm -hmm. and I'm laying this over top and then I have my fabric all smoothed out on here and I start from the middle and just kind of work my way over. Press, press, press until you know, about five, ten seconds, I guess. It doesn't take that long for it to set. I make sure I cover the entire area. And sometimes you can tell if you take it up and you just kind of roll it like mm -hmm. this. And if you see a bubble there, then it didn't glue. It didn't, it didn't adhere. So you can go ahead and hit that with the iron to re-glue it. But you're going to be doing the next phase, which is you're going to be quilting it. So once you get both of your pieces done, go ahead and set those aside. Now we're going to go ahead and get our lining done because we're going to do all of our quilting at the same time. So you're going to grab the fabric that you're using for your lining. 
same thing press it press it press it get all the wrinkles out if you steamed it if you if you put water or best press or whatever and just get all of that done so it does any shrinking or shifting before you do your cutting same thing you're going to cut your pieces 18 by 22 you're going to cut two 18 by 22 pieces for this is just the lining we're not even cutting out the the center pocket yet we're just doing our lining so you got 18 by 22 cut two of them and then you're going to grab your batting because the lining has the batting in it you're going to cut two 18 by 22 pieces of your cotton batting. Now the next step we're going to do is now we're going to fuse it. How I'm fusing it is I have, I'm using the basting spray. If you have that basting powder, just sprinkle it on there, lay it on there, then you iron it. I haven't been able to get the basting powder yet. And I think Linda has some. I do. Sorry. I know. Yep. She hasn't shared. <laughs> I she thought hasn't I'd given you some. She hasn't shared it yet. So I'm still dealing with the spray. So um, I, I have my, if I have my piece it. And how I like to do it is if you'll notice your batting usually has a softer side and a side that's more bumpy. Well, the bumpy side is where I usually put my my spray adhesive on because then I'm laying my fabric over top of that bumpy side. So you're going to have your fabric on here. How I do it is I'll lay my batting out, out. I'll smooth my, my fabric over top because I'm still having to use the spray. And then I peel it back, half of it back, spray lightly. Carefully. Carefully. So it doesn't get on your mat. Yes. It's sticky. And, and, and I'm very careful. And I'm not even, do, I'm just tap, 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 tap. I'm not putting that much on it. I'm just needing it for just a, a hold, just to hold it just a little bit. It's not like I'm doing this massive quilt where it can stretch and pull like you're doing a weight and it could shift on you. This is just a little piece, 18 by 22. So I just peel it back. I'm just, just a little bit pushing it back, smoothing out all of my wrinkles. Then I grab the other side and I pull it back till it stops because that's where the glue was and that's and then I smooth that out. Do that to both pieces. Now you're going to take it to your sewing machine and now you're going to do your quilting. So now you got both those pieces ready. Now I need for you to quilt them. So you got several different options and of course it's all up to you on how you want to do it. If you look at this one right here, this one, uh, this was the one, I know, I'm not sure if it was Lori or Heather had done it, but here they just did straight line grid, you know, grid, uh, grid, grid quilting. So I recommend, I've always recommend having a larger, larger stitch length, maybe like, um, you know, a three or something. I don't like the same tiny sh uh, stitch length that you have for when you're piecing, but I like to have it a little bit more looser. So they just did this grid. So they just did a diagonal grid. They just drew their first line and just followed it and then they drew another line and they just followed it so they did a grid and they did it to the outside pieces both pieces and then they also did that same grid on their inside lining so it's up to you on how you want to do your quilting you're going to quilt both of the foam pieces both of the batting pieces now mine I did a little different because I think I think grid quilting takes longer and of course I was just sampling it out so I just did a, a simple stipple. I mean, I just fat, got matching thread and I just stipple. Don't look at my, don't look at these things I'm pointing out, my boo boo. So <laughs> here I'm pointing it out. So I just did a simple stipple on both pieces. That, that's, that's all I've been. I had a really bad boo boo right here and it got covered by the pocket. You'll never see it. So <laughs> we're all not perfect. So then I did the same thing. I just did a simple large stipple on my inside pieces. And once you have all of that done, guess what? You got all your prep work done. That's it. Yep. So you, we're not even, I, if you want to go look at the pockets, they're easy. That can be easy done, done in your classes. So this is just going to save Heather and Lori some time. If you go ahead and get your prep work done so that you can continue and sew along with them. Now, you don't even have to do any of this prep work at all. You can sit there, watch the whole class, drink coffee and bonbons and just have a great time. <laughs> You know, laughing and cutting up with all yeah. of us as yeah. we're watching it and then catch it later. Yeah. So. <laughs> and again, just as a reminder, the class is free, so we're mm -hmm. not going to spend the time with the 
go back and show that again and show yeah. that again and show that again. You know, we're really trying to get the information out there so that you can go and spend the time that you want watching the replay, following the directions, and making not only one, but two and five, and you know, start handing these out to your mm -hmm. friends or maybe even selling these. Mm -hmm. So we're really gonna try to have you guys get started with some of this beginning stuff so that when you sit down and watch with Heather and Laura live, if you wanna sew along, terrific, but like Lisa said, I really would be enjoying it. Just I like to take fun. notes yeah. when I watch a video. Those notes help me. The physical writing aspect helps my brain remember those things, mm -hmm. not just listening. I don't remember as much, but if I write it down, then I've got those notes, but it helps mm -hmm. me do that too. So again, lining fabric, batting. Outside fabric, the fusible fleece. Yep. So those two guys there. Do your quilting. Make Let me your... tell you, if you've never quilted before, now's the perfect time to try because yeah. you can just have fun. You can do loop de loops. You can do stipple. You can do whatever you want, or you can just draw your lines. Just have fun with it because it's you know there's yeah. nobody policing it. Just have a good time. <laughs> and do your straps or choose to have straps that you already own. What we recommend is you don't do anything with the grommets because they're going to show you some techniques there. As Lisa mentioned, you can do the pockets if you want to, but they're going to show you a couple options with the pockets yep, too. They are. So you've got two options for the pockets. I think we've covered most everything that you need to yeah. get started. We're looking forward to seeing you. It's going to be the 11th and 12th of October. So follow along with us. This is going to be on the Creating with Martelli Facebook page. This is not on the Martelli main page. That's a different So make sure group. you go to the Creating with Martelli Facebook page for this class. If you don't buy the kit, everybody's able to watch the class for free. But those of you that bought the kit, you're really going to appreciate it. And thank you for buying the kits. So, yes. I know we've had a bunch go out the door already, and we yeah. have to go make we some more. We have to more. make more kits. <laughs> so thanks, guys. We're looking forward to having Heather and Laura here, and we're looking forward to you all learning and having a great time making these bags. All right. Y'all have a good evening. Bye-bye.